hey guys, so um, Kenny and I are here today. We're we're gonna we're we're gonna share. We Kenny is gonna share oh, a lot about. Um, uh, I volunteered him for a breakfast, and he had anxiety, but he knocked it out of the park. Um, lots of people yeah, were we think. were quite um, quite impressed with the talk, and also I think he set off some anxiety in some people. And but um, on a on a topic that I think is quite worthy, to be honest. So uh, what we thought we'd do today is just um, share that that deck, and then share that prezzo, so that um, or at least slices of it, so you can see what we're thinking about, um, what Kenny's thinking about. And then this is um, this is going to be one that um, we spend a lot of time on. Um, so you, you'll probably see some emails from us come later. So make sure you subscribe uh, to the website. At, uh, subscribe to the newsletter for, at the website, www.thiscommercelife.com. Um, because we're, there's, a, there's this section here that we're going to talk through. But then... Um, Kenny's actually going to go into more detail as well, right? So there's some parts yeah. there that you, you'll not want to miss. So um, so without further ado, what I thought I'd do is... You want to try to share it? I'm going to share my screen. Um, I'm going to have a small echo for a second. Um, um, so Kenny Venucci sharing strategies on pricing, promotions, and distribution. Um, pretty similar to the one that he did at um, um, that he did, you know, uh, at the BC Food and Bev. For the same right. presentation, and I think mm -hmm. the reason we taught wanted to talk about this at BC Food and Beverage is because with a lot of startups or small companies, is everybody rushes into packaging, everybody rushes into um, design and the coolness of the product and they're worried about their ingredients, which are all critical, right? And then they worry about, do I get to a thousand stores and how much marketing I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna demo it, et cetera. But nobody, not nobody, I think it's it's unfortunate that a lot of people don't spend enough time thinking, how are you gonna pay for this? And the way you pay for these things is through the product. So the difference between your COGS, your cost of goods, and what you sell it to whomever, end consumer, retailer, distributor, that spread is your money. So you could have all the you know, wildest dreams in the world and, and want to you know, spend a million dollars, but if you're making a hundred grand, it's, then you got to figure out where the $900,000 mm -hmm. shortfall would come from. So, to speak. Mm -hmm. so the reason I like spending time on here, because I don't think enough time gets spent here. And I think where most people start is they take a look at their COGS, probably double it, for a lot of companies you and I deal with, especially Phil, especially the food companies, you hit a farmer's market. So you bought, you know, you, you, you're into it for a dollar, you sell it for two and you're happy, happy, right? You doubled up, et cetera. Um, and then I think that this, where it starts to fall apart pretty quickly after that is, and I've heard this story literally a thousand times, is then a buyer or somebody from one of the retailers in town walks through and says, oh, my God, this is fantastic. This is so good. You should really try to sell it to us. Mm -hmm. and, and you get excited and they get excited and the whole world gets excited. Um, and Until, then it falls yeah. apart from there, right? Yeah. So to illustrate sort of what we're talking about, of how most would do it, right? And you'll, see, you'll get the concept of the iceberg as we go through. Many will start, your cogs on the right there, to the right of the iceberg, are a dollar. Your sell price is $2. Um, if you look on the left, your contribution, direct to consumer, D to C, would be the dollar. You pay, you buy your products for a dollar, you sell them for two, you make a buck. And typically that's okay in these situations where you're D to C and there's nothing in the middle, nobody touching it. A 50 margin is probably a viable margin um on a d to c if that's all you do the problem is like we said when the retailer comes in the purple the retailer comes to you gets all excited the retailer knows your retail is two dollars we put a small margin in here this is not reality i don't think the margin of a, when when the retailer says well i'd probably want a 35 margin that means you have to sell this to the retailer at a buck 30. Mm -hmm. They make 35, which I don't think is going to be enough in most categories, but mm -hmm. let's assume ourselves positively here, which means you're left with a 23 margin. 
And a 23 margin, if nothing else is going on in this world, is really tight on a good day. But if other things are happening, like we'll go to the next slide, is the part I think most people miss, is that 23% or 30 cents now has to cover what you don't see if you're going strictly at to a, a farmer's market. Here, flip the slide. So, so before flip. I flip the sign, I, I think the other things that are really worthy here is the other thing that maybe it's a little bit rare because we talk about it a lot, but you also see like most small brands really kind of under forecast their, their cost of goods, for example, um, you know, because a lot of oh times I have to make the assumption on this field that they knew what they were doing on the yeah. cost of goods to your point. Yeah. Yeah. That could be, but, but all I, I think, yeah. I think, and, and so I, I think it's a well taken point because there's only so far we can unravel this, but, but I think that's one of these things is when you look at this and you go, this is reasonable. What you have to know is that what you've done is to do your cogs properly because what what i see that's really common i think you do too is particularly farmers market sort of people is they the cogs is simply the ingredients that it takes to put stuff in here it doesn't even count how long it took you to assemble that item at home or to bake it or if you to didn't include that you haven't done the cogs right at all those sort of things right so to your point your cogs must yeah. include everything it took to get you to the farmer's market. Yeah. So your packaging, gas, um, packaging the I mean, cost you, of the farmer's market, the you know, things like that. You may be able, you could probably even pull out of cogs mm -hmm. and you could use those as an operating, mm -hmm. like truly what to me should be is any ingredients, the packaging, the box you put it in all the stuff that it takes. And, and obviously the labor to put that all together. So having said that, you don't have to put the cost of the farmer's market. You don't have to add your your time and shipping. Those are operating expenses. They need to be covered somewhere. But that even makes, if you do that, it, it makes it even worse. So we won't scare the shit out of people yeah. too yeah. quickly. But really and truly, just figure out what it costs you to make this product per unit. That's what your COGS is. So pretend yeah. this is a chocolate bar. 50 cents in ingredient, 25 cents in labor, 25 cents in packaging, a buck. We, I don't care if that's true or not, but that's what your COGS is. It's not the $200 to do the show. That All the $200 after that is you need to sell a lot of bars. Mm -hmm. Do it this way. If that's what you want to do, you need to sell 200 bars at a dollar mm -hmm. a piece to cover mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. If you want to pay yourself $10 an hour after five hours, that's another 50 bars mm -hmm. to cover. Just mm -hmm. that's covering. That's not, there's no money made. Nobody made money, zero money. So, so I guess we're, we're about to move to the other slide. I think that is the pause here is if for one second you think you haven't covered your cost of goods, right? Stop you should probably now. pause here for a second Stop now, and then just go figure that out first. Cause the, 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 the next slide will get a little bit more alarming. Yeah. It, it will get alarming for people who have done their cogs, right? So if you haven't done your cogs, right, you probably, you probably want to pause here. I'll tell you the um, truth. If you haven't done your cogs right, it, it based on what you see here, it's catastrophic. Yeah. Sorry, it just is. There's no other way to say it because you you're with the 23% margin left over that 30 cents when the retailer walks in, you've really put yourself into a pickle. Yeah. Yeah. You really have yeah. because what you don't see under the under the iceberg when you hit retail is all the other expenses that are coming at you and everything below the retail needs to be covered um with that 30 cents per unit because now we're talking retailer because a retailer is going to probably want some sort of listing fee whether it's a dollar amount pa um a free fill i don't care co-op can run who knows between five and 15 percent depending on what category your terms in ar are you going to get paid in 15 30 45 or 90 days and what's the uh, is there a one percent two percent if they pay faster um, any other allowances, defective allowances, warehouse allowances, whatever. And then, you know, how are you going to protect their margin when on sale? Do you need a broker or distributor? That could be anywhere between 5 and 35%. Marketing, and I'm not talking the marketing you do. I mean, it could be some of the co-op, but it, extra marketing you want to do. Do you want to put stuff on Facebook and Instagram? Do you want yeah. to boost those posts? Got to be paid. Yeah. And yeah. then basically, then you're shipping fees and fines. You still got to get this product to these people and a lot of people say oh i can do it i'm gonna put it in my car 
And I, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. But you're putting your gas, your value at zero, most likely to make it work. But just so we all know, like this, I, I'm going to tell you right now, between if you got to listing fees and co-op, the 30 cents is gone. Yep. In many cases, the listing fee, the 30 cents is gone. Right. And that 30 cents, remember, what we're talking about is because we're now talking to retailer, cogs a buck, you're selling to them at a dollar thirty if they will accept the 35 margin. Big, big if. Most will run 40 and 45, which means it could be as low as a dollar ten at a 45 margin, because they would take 90 cents from you, your spread. So you'd end with a dime now to cover all the bottom. Yeah, I think you know, and the one that's so let's say your farmer's market so you don't go somewhere that needs a listing fee no problem the other thing that will go sometimes into listing instead of a listing fee will be free fill right so this is this is when a retailer says listen i don't charge you something but send me a couple of cases so i can one case per store per skew mm -hmm. right. you know that's that's the same thing as a listing fee right, right? because you, you've got to pay for those things and i think the other one that's really common is mcb slash scan bags and that is one that you know you have to do it right because you you need sometimes you need to have discounts on shelf right like nice you put something out new you you know like this is this is retail not everybody sells everything for full price there are moments you have to discount there are moments you got to do things but um all of these count towards um you know things that are going to become very problematic when when it's too tight above yeah exactly and mm -hmm. and so we all understand like the fundamental problem with this model here as you see it in front of you is this was priced with strictly nobody touching it except you mm -hmm. and the final consumer mm -hmm. if this is going to be your model for life never bring a retailer in never bring a distributor in you probably can function this way because a lot of this bottom goes yeah, because you're talking about just so you're you're really talking about like so if you are only set up for this and you can only do this top portion, then you should stay in the top portion, right? So you should go to direct to consumer and just stay out of yeah online and or and or the farmers Correct. market. And when Correct. the retailer comes and talks to you, send them away. Well, no, but online actually has like so online other problems. But at least you got a fifty. Online has spread. this problem, right? It has a shipping fee. Yeah, not a fine, but it has a shipping fee problem that you still need to cover yeah. in this iceberg. Well, it might have so, some MCB yeah. scam back that you might have to reduce, but right. at least on that one, it's a dollar to two dollars. Like it's not a dollar to the dollar thirty. Yes. Agreed. So you're Agreed. still this model will still protect you potentially even from this mess. Right. The problem with this one is that the pricing on the previous is how most do it. They get their cogs. They double it and they're happy because they're making a 50 margin or a 100% markup. Mm -hmm. I hate the word markup. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's their mentality. And again, direct to consumer is probably doable most times. I would never price that way anyway. I mean, really, the first thing you should do, Phil, is go out and make sure you know what the price of your product is. Whether you're into it for a dollar or not, if the market is accepting $4 or $3 for your product, that's your retail. Yep. Why do you yep. want to undercut the market? Yep. Yeah, go to the agreed. farmer's market at three dollars yeah agreed. or four dollars then when the retailer whoever sees it that's actually they get it that's the retailer that's, that's what the they see in their stores yeah. for similar products yeah like why discount it okay so I think and then, the next more kind of highlight quick, that to me i think and it's it's hard for people to really understand because i don't think they appreciate how much shit's in the middle is when you get a cog your cogs in CPG, realistically, on small ticket item, which is most of the world we live in, you know, in that let's say one to twenty dollar um, retail range, really your, your your cogs multiplied by three, four ideally is your retail. So if you're into it for a dollar, you're selling at four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, here you can see it in the B two C model. This is the simplest one. You you make it for a dollar and then you you sell it for four. So you actually you make some room now, in between. I, yeah, but yeah. be careful. That percentage, there's still some cost that you have to cover. There might Correct. be some marketing, et cetera. Because yeah. really yeah. the margin is is then um seventy-five percent is where you start. But, I but say you really, end at fifty-eight. Yeah. 
but you're building in room for futurity because really because you never know right so so you you might because we see this out of brands too is is there are moments where brands go listen this is what i want to do this is i love this thing and this is how i want to do it until somebody shows up and says hey so listen we could do this you know at retail right, right. but if you only built the one to two dollar range in this model you could never expand to this model no, right you're, you're or you can never start. expand to this model but if you kind of like do build it this way you get a chance to actually reconsider yourself and then at some point you might go yeah i want to go b2b director i want to go b2b direct to store you know and a broker in between right this kind of costing allows you to you know build yourself some flexibility so you and i think that's it. all we're trying to illustrate is that if you mm -hmm. don't if you don't think ahead and you stay in that first model the as soon as the first retailer talks to you is, is pretty much a death sentence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you're you you've if you've only doubled which but most people do i hate to tell you because that's they figure that's a decent start you're dead before you start because i even at a 35 margin buddy i mean i put 35 it's probably closer to a 40 is what the law ask yeah right so that other model is even even worse than I hate to say it, but yeah. it just it gets it just gets yeah. ugly. And if you look at it, even the second model, four dollar four dollar retailer dollar cogs, you're selling to the retailer two sixty if it's a thirty five margin. And then I took some you know I said okay we're going to do something here something there. We ended at a forty three, which you can probably survive with. But you know look at this one. How about if you went through distributor right away, and did everything through distributor, which is fine. But by the time it's all said and done, you're probably running close to a 26. It's highly unlikely you're going to cover operating. Yeah. And operating now is the shipping to and from places. It's your rent. It's taxes. It's payroll. All those other costs. You know, if you did $100,000 business at 26%, it's only 26 grand. Your rent is in this city is probably 26 grand easy. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So. You haven't made anything. Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the um, breakfast that Kenny did. Uh, generated a lot of response. We thought it'd be worthwhile to do it here. I think um, it's important for people to understand. Kind of into a fast thought, but um, we we thought you know the, these are some of the things that um, he and I look at all the time that we're always thinking about. Um, so we thought it'd be worthwhile to share. Um, stay tuned. There's more to come if uh, if we set off emotions in you that um or alarm bells you know or alarm bells any of those things that make you um you know feel super nervous uh maybe shoot us a note and and let us see if we can help you uh and then there's more to come on this so um there's a few other topics can go get a little bit deeper um so um make sure you go and sign up at uh, www.thiscommercelife.com sign up to the newsletter we'll send some stuff out and then um get you connected. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.